well, over the past week and a half or so, I've uh, built myself a gantry crane. Um, it's got to the stage where arms are too crook and lifting sort of getting beyond it now. Um, and doing these old engines, you know, I ain't going to be trying to lift anything with them. So I built a gantry crane. I've still got to put some money aside and pick up a set of casters, some five-inch casters and put on it. Um, and I've got to make a trolley. I realise you can buy the trolleys off eBay and, you know, 80, 90 bucks for a trolley. But I've got the gear here, so I may as well have a go at making one. And um, just going to be not, it's not going to be the normal type where the, the rollers run inside the, the I beam. Mine's going to run, the two flat rollers are running across the top of the I beam. I bought the box section for this quite some time ago and the I-beam to build it ages ago, but as you can see, that box section ended up being the workbench over there. So that was the end of that idea. I need the new bench, so that's what we did. Yeah. Time to build a trolley. These are going to go in the Cincinnati and I'm going to deck them off with a fly cutter. So if there is a little bit of warpage, it doesn't really matter. That's one done. I'll do the other one and see it in Cincinnati. Pretty. Okay, so we've got to build two rollers to go on the top of the I-beam, two wide rollers. That's where I'm going to run mine. Um, these will be plain, then I'll machine up two rings. I'll put a weld prep that I can just 
uh, put four four welds, you know, two four welds to hold the ring on each end to keep it aligned on the eye beam. So this is going to come down to uh, 48 mil. So I've picked up some bearings, picked up four bearings, just some Timkins um, 6203s. So just basic turning. So machine this down to 48 mil. Put about a three quarter hole up the guts, and then machine out two pockets for the bearings to fit in. One at each. I'll part it off, obviously, one at each end, and um, then I'll machine the rings up, and then I'm got to machine the two axles up to fit through the bearings. These are going to be uh, 120 mil long. So that'll give it, a, well, I'm going to make an 8mm spacer that goes over the end. So it'll have about 100 114mm of movement on the, um, or around that, yeah, on top of the um, eye beam. The eye beam's 100mm uh, across, 4 inches. So, got to put a centre in here. What I'm using here is a TNGG insert um, I got from Live Tools. It's a made by Union Materials. I believe the company is. It's got like a ceramic coating. Um, cuts very similar to high speed steel and that's a beautiful finish. That was a uh, 40 thou depth of cut. And that's just glorious. Still fiddling around with speeds and feeds. Um, they've got like a honed edge. A honed, honed edge on them, really nice. Well, very often you see them over the metric mic. Hate the bastards. Point eight one to come off. Forty-eight point oh two. That's not bad. Close enough. Uh, what I'm going to do is part this off, or put a parting line in it, put it over in the bandsaw, part it off because I'm running low in part off inserts. Um, cut it off in the bandsaw, and then I'm going to set it up in the four jaw to do the features on either end and put the center bore through. within half a thou. Should 
Not really bothered taking all that off. I'm going to drill it out anyway. But I've left a mil and a half on, so when I spin it around to do the bearing in the other end, I can take a, another final, a final measurement, and I'd say it's about a, a mil and a half up. So I'm going to center drill, drill it out to about three quarters of an inch, because the axle that goes through is only 17 mil, and then um, put the recess in for the bearing. It's a 19 mil hole right through. I just done some measuring and a bit of fine tuning and I reckon that's going to be a nice press, very light press fit. Um, I've got to be careful because when I tack the, um, the ring on the outside I'm a bit worried this might shrink a touch. So I'll just have a bit of a think about that for a minute. And I wouldn't, it doesn't really matter if these are actually a slide in fit. Um, just with a touch of Loctite on the outside, won't even hurt it. They can't go anywhere, they can't fall out, they can't do any drama. So, and there's always going to be weight on it. So, have a bit of a think for a minute and work out what I'm going to do there. Prep so I can just tack the ring of them when I make them. Spin this round to the other end. So that's what we ended up with. This is a bit of um, some sort of tube I picked up somewhere, I don't know where I got it from, but this is what I make the rings, the two rings for, well, I'll be four in the end, for the um, end of the rollers.
will do. So I want to part these off to eight mil or finish finished length of these parts are going to be eight millimeters. Do the other one the same and bring his back so we'll put the big chamfer to the outside for the weld prep could use a press but too lazy to go and shift the crap to get to it see a little tiny weld prep in there it a couple of tacks of weld just to hold these rings on and hopefully don't shrink this in a ball there's the second one you can see they're pretty much identical as good as Buff them off for the flap disc, just smooth them off. These are going to be hidden behind the plate, so it's not going to matter what they look like, as long as they function. I really like these TNGG inserts, they're good.
dickhead me didn't film I forgot to press the bloody record button but I've just shredded the, the shaft I thought I'd pressed it but obviously I didn't like a dickhead um, it's just a 5 8 11 thread it's a good fit so I just um, as you see I turned down both ends and I yeah just turned one and then or put one thread on then just spun around and then cut the next thread wire then was set up still so that's that's done one axle's done I'll do the other one now and jobs are right so right, yeah I've marked the two plates out one stacked on top of the other jammed tightly in the vise I'm going to put an 11 16 drill through this obviously a pilot hole first yeah, this will be where the two axles slip through and clamp the rollers in place. made up some thin one millimeter washers real quick on the lathe getting late in the day I've almost had a gut full today had enough time to go inside so I didn't film that just to just drill the hole and part them off it's pretty simple That's actually freed them rollers up now and um, knit them up tight and they still spin. So they do have this one, it does have a little bit of re uh, resistance but not a lot. But uh, I'm going to go and sit this up on the crane now, on the gantry, and just have a look and see what it looks like, and just see how it rolls as is. I hope you guys can see there. <laughs> so he's up on top of the gantry crane, obviously. It's got a bit of wiggle room at the side, which I don't think is going to affect anything. It might be different when it's got weight on it, I don't know. If it does, I can always 
and put a bearing down here to um, to run along this edge, you know, to keep it aligned. But for the yeah, for now, this is the way it's going to be. It's not going to be. It's not a tool. It's this gantry train is probably not going to get used every day. That's that's for yeah. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with them results. I'm just pissed off this axle is a touch longer than this one. This one here is actually a touch short, the back one. Um, but shit, that's either here or there. Uh, I can't roll off. It hits these. Maybe you can see them there or not. The two plates. There's two plates here. To bolt the leg on so it can't go any further than that which is good but i think it'll be successful for what i'm doing here well i bloody hope so anyway it was a lot easier building it like this than it was building four separate wheels to run on the inside of the beam that was my theory anyway that's it for me today i've had a gutful i'm going inside cup of coffee time